So what does it take to become a billion dollar broker? Well, it may not be as crazy as it seems, which is why we traveled from Nashville to Atlanta for the CCC annual event to sit down with Bob Knackle, who has sold over $24 billion worth of commercial real estate. To put that in perspective, that's 615,000 Tesla Model 3s, that's 61,919 median homes in the US, and the annual GDP of Albania. So let's get into our key takeaways from our conversation with Bob and make sure to stay tuned until the end when he gives us some of his life lessons that he wishes he could have told himself when he first got started in commercial real estate. So Bob, what unconventional strategies or approaches have you had that helped you close a deal that somebody else might not necessarily consider? I think the most unconventional thing I did we were putting together an assemblage of a block front in the early 90s on 2nd Avenue between 54th and 55th Street. There was a lady that owned a little building right in the middle of the assemblage. She lived in Connecticut. Couldn't get her on the phone, would never call me back. Sent FedEx packages to the house. She signed for them, but never called. I drive up to her house two and a half hours, have a bouquet of flowers, knock on the door. I don't know whether she's gonna sick a dog at me. Maybe she's not home. I had a note in case she wasn't home opens the door, knew who I was right away, smiles, come on in, had coffee with her, we chatted for two hours, two months later made a deal to sell her building, and uh, that was, I took a big risk, but it ended up working out. Oh, that's amazing. Key lesson number one is to take advantage of unconventional strategies when it comes to finding clients, getting deals done, and handling your day to day. Like Miles Davis once said, you have to learn the rules to break them, and that is exactly what Bob has done throughout his career. He has learned the rule book inside and out for exactly how to prospect for the right clients, how to get these deals done and across the finish line, and how to best serve every stakeholder involved. As you can see with Bob's unconventional strategy, it's not like it's some crazy secret that no one has ever thought of before. The biggest key to Bob's success, and you'll see this throughout this video, is he just puts the work in. That's all that sales takes, is actually sitting down and putting the work in. Or in this case, driving out to the lady's house and getting face to face with her to have the conversation. Mikey? Yeah, Grant. It's Mikey. The truth is, top brokers are willing to think outside the box and go above and beyond to secure these client relationships and get deals done. At the end of the day, as a commercial real estate broker, you don't get paid unless the deal closes. That's what you're here to do. Can you share a deal that didn't go as planned and kind of how you navigated the challenges there? Oh, I never remember the deals that don't go well. <laughs> no, that, actually, I'll tell you, Tyler, Tyler, I'll tell you something. I remember the deals that don't go well better than the deals that do go well. And what I'll tell you is that when they don't go well, it's always a learning experience. You gotta look at why they didn't go well and what you could have done differently. A lot of times it's laziness, truthfully, on the broker's part. You didn't make enough calls, you didn't report to the client enough, you didn't call that obvious buyer. Um, so, so many fundamental mistakes are really the, the things that trip you up. So you just have to try to remember, do the fundamentals over and over again. Yeah, communication is key. Back in 2017, in the height of my broker days, I was running around with a client that wanted to open up an arcade-like experience here in Nashville. So we sat down, I went through all of their criteria and made one mistake that I have never made since. And that was, I didn't ask all of the right questions. Yes, I asked most of the right questions, but one question I didn't ask was, are you willing to look at spaces that still fit your budget, but might be a little bit bigger than your criteria here? See, I went out and I started looking for 1,500 to 3,000 square foot spaces that would fit this concept. And we weren't very successful at first. And then the client sent me a 5,000 square foot space and said, pretty much along the lines of, why haven't you shown us this space? It pretty much checks all of our boxes. To which I replied, wow, wow. You're like, wow. So that is a good example of how deals can go wrong and how you can actually take some key lessons away from that. Because ever since then, I've always had the conversation with all of our clients of how big are you willing to go or how small are you willing to go under different circumstances. In a rapidly changing market, like what we've seen over the last four years, how do you make sure that you stay ahead of the curve and what's coming? Well. Last four years, you have two different types of, of radically changing markets. You have the radically changing market that's getting worse and the radically changing market that's getting better, right? So we're, we've been in the market that's getting worse, right? So most important thing you can look at 
We all look at comparable sales when we're advising a seller what their property is worth. In a market that's rapidly declining, forget about sales. Something that closed today may have been under contract for three or four months, may have taken one or two months to negotiate the contract. The offer was made a month before that. That information is six months old. You got to look at what contract negotiations are going on today. What contracts did you recently sign and share that information with the seller? In a rapidly declining market, that information is more insightful about what the value of the property is than looking at comparable sales. And you've got to be a very active broker to be able to do that. Key lesson number two is make sure that you know your market inside and out better than anybody else, hopefully. Because if you're out there as a commercial real estate broker and you are doing these transactions, one, it will help you when you're talking to clients to fully understand what lease rates are, what the occupancy and vacancy rates are, how quickly you can get a space filled, as well as here's what your sale price on a price per square foot would look like. And here's what I think that this level credit of tenant is going to bring you on a cap rate. It just makes your clients trust you that much more because you know what you are talking about. You aren't having to speculate. You aren't having to say, hey, that's a great question. Let me get back to you. And while that is a good deflection, it doesn't really help you move forward. So make sure that you know your market better than anybody else. Study the local business journals, study your market data, and make sure you are staying on top of industry trends. With the rise of technology and commercial real estate, how do you see the broker role evolving? Well, I think it's going to change significantly. And what I'll say is, you know, I started in the business in 1984. 80 point, no computer, no fax machine, no cell phone. And used to carry rolls of quarters around to go down to the corner of the pay phone. Um, but, and we've seen what's happened in the last 40 years. I think the extent to which the market will change in the next five years is gonna to be to a larger degree than we've seen in the last 40. Um, and so you have to use AI. You have to get ahead of the curve. I don't think broker jobs will be replaced by AI, but you might be replaced by somebody using AI. Two main functions a broker has in selling building. Finding a buyer, negotiating the deal. Finding the buyer part can be mostly replaced by technology. The negotiating the deal I don't think can. Buildings are not widgets. There's so many different moving parts, so many different things. The, the 100,000 foot building on the north side of the street can have a very different value than the 100,000 footer on the south side of the street. So you need the human element to be able to, to make that happen. But I think that parts of the brokerage industry could be marginalized by technology. Key number three, embrace technology. Commercial real estate has been stuck in the 1980s for the last 40 plus years. It's kind of painful to watch, honestly, especially when you compare it to what's going on in the residential real estate world. When I first started this YouTube channel, I had to look at guys like Ryan Surhant to get inspiration for how to actually do commercial real estate on a YouTube channel because nobody else is doing anything like this. And that's not saying that I'm anything special. It's just that the commercial real estate market is so far behind that if you as a broker are the one that goes out there and you embrace the technology, you figure out how to utilize AI in your data analytics and collections, you're able to use AI to scale your operations, you will crush your competition. In your opinion, what are some underutilized investment opportunities or markets that people should be paying attention to? Well, I, I think you want to look at markets that um, that people don't want to invest in. You, David. We've been through a couple of years recently where in New York City, nobody wanted to invest in anything. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but clearly, you know, people really were hesitant to invest. But you look at the people who have have made massive fortunes in one generation. They've done it by buying in a crappy neighborhood that nobody wanted to buy in. They bought everything and transformed the nature of that neighborhood. And all of a sudden, you know, they're worth hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. And so that you have to have the capital and you have to have the courage to do something like that. But if you have the capital and the courage and a little insight, foresight, could be a great thing. How as a broker do you convince investors and developers to think that far ahead of the curve? Um, well, I don't think brokers really can force somebody to do one thing or another. Uh, I think what you can do is educate them, try to give them market data to support your position relative to an investment. Why do you think it's so great? What's, what does the landscape look like for competing properties? Information is so important. Our business is not the real estate business, it's the information business. 
Key number four, find your blue ocean. Don't go out there into the red ocean where all of the sharks are fighting over the one whale that everybody's trying to get. Find your blue ocean where you don't have any competition. You can do your own thing and be unbelievably successful. That's pretty much what Bob is talking about here when he's saying, go out and invest in areas that no one else is investing in. You don't have competition. You don't have to worry about other people bidding up the price. You can learn the market better than anybody else and understand the fundamentals and the dynamics that will make that market take off eventually. That's pretty much what my investment strategy has been since 2019. We go in and find neighborhoods or corridors that are really overlooked by the majority of commercial real estate investors, but that have the fundamentals. They're close to downtown, they have high traffic counts, you can see them starting to turn around, but they haven't quite gotten there yet. And it's been a very successful method for us. What are three to five of the biggest lessons or key takeaways that you've had over your career that you wish you could go back in time and tell yourself? Number one, get help as soon as you can. Um, it's important to leverage your time. Uh, you know, the great book by Benjamin Hardy and, and Dan Sullivan says, 20% of what we do makes us 80% of our money. So do as much of that 20% as possible. The other 80% either don't do it or delegate it to somebody else. So you have to have those somebody else's to delegate to. That's one thing. Uh, secondly, drill down into one thing and focus on it really intently. Become the market expert. Know it better than anybody. Uh, if you study the market, you can, you'll have knowledge that people who have been doing it for 20 or 30 years probably don't have. So be an expert. Get to sleep early. You gotta wake up early in this business and I found out when my goal was to wake up early, I wasn't that great at hitting the goal. When my goal was to sleep early, so I could wake up early, I hit the goal. So get to sleep early so you can wake up earlier and realize in the first seven to 10 years of your career, don't expect to have work-life balance. It's all work. You gotta put the work in, set yourself up for the future. All right, Bob, thank you so much. Kyle, it's great being with you. So there you have it. Be persistent, get creative with your deals, think outside of the box, and continuously learn about your industry so you can better serve your market. Speaking of getting creative, you want to go find your blue ocean as a commercial real estate professional. So check out this video here on the biggest opportunities in commercial real estate today.